Hi, this is Jim Linnell. You know, I've been doing leather work for over 50 years now, and I've been teaching classes all over the place on behalf of Elk Track Studio. And of all of the classes that I've ever taught, there are none that are more important than what I'm going to show you right now. And that is, how do you get started in leather work? There are some basic techniques, some things that you need to learn, and if you learn those correctly, they will make a huge difference on how much enjoyment you get out of your leather work. So stay with me as I walk you through doing a pattern just like this, which will teach you how to use all of the most basic leather working tools. But uh, one of the things I want you to know, and this is really important, that this rich color, this burnishing that you see me getting out of this piece of leather is not because of the texture on the tool, it's because of the moisture content in the leather. It's that important to control that. So the tool, the, the leather's still giving me that nice rich color, so I, 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 it's still in good shape, but that doesn't mean that I won't have to wet it again. I'm sure I'll have to add more moisture to this piece of leather before I actually um, finish, so we'll, uh, but again, we'll, we're going to let the tools tell me when I need to do that, so. All right, we've been through two, to, two of the stamping tools so far. The next one that we use, um, well, this one might actually be the most important of all of your stamping tools. This one's called the beveler. And I guess I should show you again what that looks like. The beveler is kind of a wedge-shaped tool. It's got one um, corner here that's longer than the others, and it's kind of beveled off. Of course, that's where it gets its name. And when you're using this tool, um, this tool, um, we use this, this long corner of it. The toe of it is what that's called. We use the toe of it, and we put that right into those cuts that we initially cut into the leather and by tapping it and moving it along we press down the leather on one side and this is how we make a flower or whatever our design is. This is how we make it stand out on that piece of leather by kind of tapping it down. If any of you come from a woodworking background when you ever watch a woodworker carve woods that they will um, they will remove uh, wood they will they will take and chip it away well we don't have to do that with leather we actually just compress the fibers of it of the leather we use these tools um, with the, the leather at the right moisture content we and we uh, we just compress the fibers and that again that's where we get that rich burnish but so when doing this I think probably well, there's two things that, that are challenges for somebody first getting started. Number one is, again, getting this to come out nice and smooth. Uh, once again, I'll remind you, you're watching somebody that's done leather work for over 50 years. So this should look like, wow, nothing to it. You just walk that tool along, it, and it yeah, pushes down the leather. There's nothing to it. You know what happened the first time I tried this? It looked like somebody took a ball peen hammer to my leather. It, it was all chewed up. You could see every mark, every everything that I did. I tried to move it like that, and you could see every every little ding that I put into the leather. And those little dings are caused by, again, not using the correct technique. So what's the correct technique with this tool? And that is, you it, again, it comes down to the grip, just like with the the uh, pear shader. I've got that same tight grip. I've got it um, holding it pretty much with the same fingers and so forth. I have it so it's just lightly touching the leather and uh, and as I uh, tap it, it, uh, it kind of bounces back up. And here's the thing I would have you look at um, and, and I'll, I'm not doing this in slow motion. Uh, I'm doing this on purpose like this. But you see how far I move this tool each time I hit it? I, yeah, it's overlapping just a huge amount, probably four-fifths of that. So uh, what you see when you hear me and see me using this tool and I'm going like this, that's what I'm doing. I, I'm only moving it a little bit each time, and that's how you get that to come out nice and smooth. You do that by overlapping these impressions quite a bit, and you'll get, you'll develop this tapping and and moving rhythm. This is this is something that comes with practice, obviously. Uh, getting um, it to come out smooth the first time, um, I would encourage you to go at whatever speed you need to to learn how to get it to come out smooth initially. But you'll find as you do more leather work, pretty soon you're you're just just moving it right along, and you you're able to develop speed. And that's where you get faster at your leather work. You don't get faster by trying to go fast. You get faster by learning how to do the techniques correctly. 
and then you don't have to go back and clean it up you know if, if it does come out choppy or bumpy or you know you're not getting the results that you want then yeah go back and clean it up run over run over it again and, and get that uh, those bumps to to uh, get get smoothed out but when you're beveling um, for the most part you want to hold this tool straight up and down now sometimes we'll get into some of the finer designs finer uh, patterns where we have lines that run very close to each other and so maybe you'll have to lean it forward just a little bit so that you don't flatten out so much leather behind it you can do that and adjust actually how steep of an angle your beveler is um, but for the most part, you want to hold the tool straight up and down. It's called a beveler because it's supposed to look like the le leather is beveled away from the line that you're that you're working on. You want it to. It, it gives you depth, and uh, um, so that's uh, that's how you use it. Don't don't tip it to the side. I, what <laughs> I've seen this happen more than once uh, is somebody will think that the secret to walking this tool along is instead of letting it bounce along like that. They'll actually, they'll tip it like this and kind of drive it, you know. Well, when you do that, you're, you're going to be scooting your whole piece of leather, but you're also going to be um, leaving the corner of the tool, leaving a mark in the leather each time you whack it. So, again, learn this bouncing technique, this walking technique. This is so critical to learning how to use this tool and the pear shader correctly. The next question. How deep should I be beveling? How how hard am I hitting this tool? What's the, what's the goal here on that? Um, and that's that's a pretty easy one to answer. When you first cut this design into the leather, you were cutting it. If you'll remember, should have been cutting it about one third to maybe one half the thickness of your leather. However deep you cut that design into the leather, that's how deep you should be beveling. So when you get done with running the beveler along here, if you look at that cut, if you still see that there's a cut still existing at the bottom, then you didn't get to the bottom of the cut. If you are beveling deeper than what you cut, you're going to find that you're kind of rolling over the edges. You won't have sharp, crisp edges there. And sometimes that's done on purpose just to give a nice rounded effect to your carving. But the goal, as far as how deep should you be beveling, is that you bevel as deeply as you cut. And so one of the th what does that mean? There, there's another kind of important thing. When I was cutting... Um, for example, the, the acanthus leaf. I had uh, this, this outside edge of this acanthus leaf, I had it fairly deep out here, and as I come around the top of that leaf and came down to where that leaf kind of ended, uh, where it kind of looks like it overlays onto the body of that, that leaf, I lightened up on that cut. That cut just kind of faded out to nothing. It didn't, when I cut it in, I didn't cut it as deep all the way to the very end of that cut. I got lighter and lighter and lighter starting about there and it faded out and so you know what? I'm beveling to the bottom of the cut. So I'm like getting lighter and lighter and lighter and that cut just this fades out just like that. So my beveling comes to a graceful end just like my cuts came to a graceful end. And this will really give you a nice flow to your design. It'll help, it, it'll, it'll make it look like everything is flowing nice and smooth. When you're beveling, make sure you're beveling right on the line. Uh, it, just getting close to the line that you cut is not good enough. And I, well, that might seem obvious to some of you. Believe it or not, sometimes people just take a swing at it. Um, and I'm, I'm working here in front of a camera right now, so obviously I've got lots of good light in front of me. But even if I did not have camera lights on me right now, I would have good lights here because, you know what, I'm not good at guessing what these tools do. i got to see what they do, and that means I've got to have good lights here. And, I, you know, when I'm working, I, I don't wear glasses normally, but I do put on some reading glasses when I'm doing this stamping like this because I want to be able to see what I'm doing. So I get, you know, some, some uh, help with, uh, with those kind of glasses so I can see what I'm doing. And the, the point of that being, you got to be able to see what you're doing. If you can't see what you're doing, it's going to be really hard for you to um, to get the results that you want with this. So, um, the beveling tool that I am using right now is just an average size tool, um, and, and it, it's 
probably about what anybody would have for their first bevel. But what I would tell you is that it's got a checkered texture on it. And uh, uh, again, I, I want to emphasize again, the rich burnish you see coming as a result of using this tool is not being caused by the texture on the tool. It's being caused by having just the right amount of moisture in the leather. And so again, I'm always checking to see if I'm getting that good color. If I am, that means I've got just the right amount of moisture. If, I, if that for some reason starts to not show up, then I'm going to have to check my moisture again and, and dampen it one more time. The challenge when someone is first getting started doing leather work is figuring out which side of these lines need to be beveled on. And like I said, it while every line has to be beveled on one side or the other, the challenge is which is the right side. So, for example, on this this design here, I started out with the flower on purpose. Uh, first of all, the flower is the focal point of this design. It's the the most uh, the, you know major part of it. But everything else kind of comes out from underneath it. In fact, if you look at this flower. There are petals that lay one on top of the other. When I first, when I started beveling, I beveled kind of these petals here because they're the ones that are kind of facing towards you. And then I beveled around the bottom of that flower. And I beveled all the way around this petal because um, this petal is laying on top of that one. So I beveled that one next. And then I did this one on the other side. I beveled all the way around that. And uh, then I beveled this, this one in background first. Why did I do it in that order? A general rule for leather workers is that we bevel or we, we carve our design working from the foreground into the background. And while that may not make a lot of sense to you right now at this stage of your leather working, that's something I just have you put in the back of your mind. When you are sitting there working on a project and you don't have uh, a video uh, of me telling you do this next and so forth. You got to figure this stuff out. You got to figure out what, where, where do I bevel? What side of the line do I bevel on? How do I do this? And so you got to kind of uh, know what it is you're making. If you've got a flower, how are you going to make that stand out? If you got leaves, how do, or do, does one leaf lay on top of the other? And if they do, how do you accomplish that? How do you, what do you push down to give it that effect? So. Um, it takes some thinking a little bit. Um, so uh, technique is part of it, yes, but uh, but it's more than just having the right technique. It's also making sure you you use these tools in the in the correct order and in the correct place. Um, the uh, uh, the beveler, like I said, that I'm using is is a uh, checkered beveler, and I, I I will tell you there's a reason I like to use a checkered beveler or uh, bevel, uh, tools that have some kind of texture to them. Uh, and that has a lot to do with the way I like to finish things. We have different finishes and such sometimes that will collect some additional color down in those textures and make them stand out. And that's not what this class is about. But I wanted you to know why I, uh, why I use the tools that I have um, or the, the, the textures that I'm using because it wasn't just what I happened to grab, it's just kind of what my favorites are. All right, this leather, I, this last little bit of beveling I, I did there, it's not giving me quite as dark a burnish as I'd like, so I'm going to dampen it again. But I want you to pay attention to this, and that, the, this point is that I'm not going to wet it nearly as much as I did the first time. When we wet it the first time, remember, we wet it so that the moisture got penetrated down like halfway through that piece of leather. Well, that moisture's still down in there, but it has dried here on the surface of the leather. So I'm just going to lightly moisten it on top so that that uh, so that I have some moisture there. But I'm not. I don't need to re-soak it you know, the way I initially did. So, um, and uh, I usually let it to start to dry out, dry back just a little bit. But because I didn't put that much water on it, it's, it's kind of ready to go again already here. Um, so we'll keep right on beveling. Um, I mentioned to you that the tools need to be held for the most part straight up and down. One of the things you don't want to do is get into the habit of leaning it backwards. I'll go ahead and exaggerate that here, but sometimes people will lean it back when they're beveling. And what happens when you do that, you have the back end of the tool here leaving a line that kind of is like a mirror of the a shadow of the of your design. You want to hold this tool straight up and down so that you don't get that mirror. You don't want to get that 
that line showing up there because, um, uh, well, it, 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 it detracts from the design. You want your beveling to kind of basically fade out to nothing, just like when we did the, the uh, pear shading and such, you want it to, to kind of to gradually fade away there. And that tool will do that if you hold it straight up and down when, you, when you're beveling. Um, and again, as I mentioned, the, the beveling's going to take you longer than any of the other steps. And it may seem like, oh my goodness, there is so much beveling that needs to be done. But just stay at it. Do remember that this is the most important of your stamping steps. This is the one that gives your design that three-dimensional look. It's the, the step that makes your design stand out on this piece of leather. So it's not the one you want to hurry through. This is the one you want to be very tedious, very deliberate. You want to make sure that you that you get your um, all of your lines beveled, get them beveled correctly, get them beveled deep enough, um, because that's... Uh, that's how we make it stand out. And if if what has inspired you to get give leather work a try is that you maybe saw a, a picture of, of a horse or some kind of an animal that somebody did in leather and you want to be able to do that kind of work on leather, well, guess what? You better know how to bevel because most of that kind of leather work is done with beveling tools. It's mostly beveling that, that you use with when you're doing figure carving. And you know what? If you know how to use this tool right here, or whatever beveler you have in your in your kit right now, that's that tool is going to be used the same way when you're doing figure carving, or when you're doing uh, really small floral, or whatever kind of uh, style of work, Celtic carvings. It, it doesn't matter. A beveler is a beveler, and they're all used the same. And it doesn't matter which one of the ones that you uh, happen to have, or what the texture is. That again the important thing, and that's what I'm showing you here, is the technique. We did a, um, a video, uh, and I mentioned videos on our website, but I, I did a video just on beveling, and I think it was like two hours long. Um, and it's not that I'm a really slow beveler, it's just that there's so many different things that, that are so important about the beveler. Not just the technique, but then also, what are all these different textures used for and so forth. So if you really want to get into the details of um, what a beveler is and how to use one correctly and how to, you know, uh, what, even which ones uh, to use for different purposes, uh, that's kind of what that, that, that uh, video was all about. So, and you'd be surprised. Um, there are folks that have been doing leather work a long time that, uh, that struggle with this tool. They, they just, they, they don't want to, uh, admit it because, uh, but it is uh, a, a troublesome tool for many leather workers and has been over the years. You see how my rich color, the burnish is starting to come back. You can see that I've got, uh, with just a little bit more moisture, I'm getting a little darker color out of it. That's what I was, um, I guess the point I wanted to make about letting your tools tell you when you need to add more moisture to your leather. When you're not getting that, that burnish, it's, it's a moisture issue. It's not your tools it's, or anything else. So we have here um, a turn back on this acanthus leaf, which is kind of like where the tip of the leaf is folded back on itself. And so we've got to bevel around it like this. So it looks like this vein runs up underneath it. But this vein gets beveled too. Uh, sometimes people will kind of overlook this or, or skip over this particular uh, part. But when we use the camouflage tool, and this is one of the reasons we use these tools in the sequence we do, I did a, as careful a job as I could to make sure I didn't like let the impression of the camouflage tool reach over across the line, but it, it did in a couple places. Uh, but since this line now gets beveled, I can come back and when I bevel it, I clean that up. Now, I, now it looks like I've got really uh, a, a neat texture running right out of that cut. And that's, that's one of the reasons uh, that we do the, the camouflage first and, and, and so forth. It, it, it helps us to uh, um, just make all of these, these steps flow together a little bit better. One final thing that I would point out as I near the end of this beveling is 
Um, there will be places, in fact I'm working on one right now, where we've got this little bud that kind of comes up in between these these two stems and it's it, if you uh, the, the square tool doesn't actually do the best job of beveling. A, a beveler's got a square face on it and what you've got here is two little uh, a little uh, pointed shape that that's in here and if you try to bevel down into the very corner of that shape you're going to flatten out way more than you want to and don't worry about it. Um, we're, this is an area that we're going to be backgrounding it down. Your background tool that we use comes to a very fine point, so um, let's not try to make a square tool do what a pointed tool should be doing. So uh, let's not worry about that. But uh, before we move on, let's take a quick look at it and see what we've done. We've got all of these lines beveled. We beveled as deeply as the, the lines were cut. Um, we kind of made sure we were beveled on the correct side of every one of these lines and like I said that'll that's something that becomes easier to recognize the more leather work you do but once we've got it all beveled we're actually going to be very close to finishing up